Hi, this is Dave Golly from Pentagon Solutions BIM Consultants and we're going to take a look at taking uh, detailed manufacturing designs and actually bringing them into Revit. So you can see this unit is a particular blower. Um, it's got a lot of detail in here from the flanges, uh, even of the welds and the nuts, bolts and screws. That's typically what the manufacturer will want, but we don't want that from a Revit perspective um, and we're working on BIM projects. So on our environments, um, we actually have a BIM exchange tool. So we can simply go to our BIM exchange tool and um, we can look at our components in here. The first thing we're going to do is add connectors on and we're going to add a circular connector at key parts. Um, you can note the direction as well and we're going to put in the actual diameter and specify it. We can say whether that's a supply or a turn in there and again it looks at the various mechanical properties to physically add in to the model itself. So I can apply that and then I can orientate around to the rear of the design. And again, we can flip the direction of the actual arrow there and we're just gonna change that diameter. We're gonna keep that 200 and we're gonna say that's actually um, the return or the exhaust. So we can hit apply and okay. So we've added these connectors in and these connectors will come across in the Revit and pick up the actual sizes again. But the level of detail um, it is far too detailed for Revit. We don't want to bring that level of detail in. So this is where we're going to use our shrink wrap substitute components in here. And we're just going to simply save this out, save the model out. And it's going to ask for various range of parameters in here. Well, what we're going to do is remove the parts by size of a certain percentage. So anything that's 5% of the actual model, we can again, we can remove this. There's lots of different other geometry we can remove in here, such as internal voids. And again, we can reduce this in size to make this more manageable. So we're gonna simply hit OK and let it run and you'll see that the components will physically change in here. So we'll get these um, nice simple part that we can actually bring in the Revit. You can see the bolts gone, the actual inner workings of the actual uh, ducting itself. So we can do a quick check on the design. Um, good, because we've got all the ticks in here. It's everything that we actually expect. And what we simply want to do now is actually export these building components out. Different options in here. Um, what we can actually do is look at classifying when it comes out. And that classification will actually come across into um, Revit. Um, so we can pick up here and say this is a heat exchanger. Again, we can actually say what type of heat exchanger it is. Um, we can simply hit OK and that classification will come across. We can add in the model property information. You can see in here the center of gravity. That might be very important. This object could be particularly heavy. Um, we might want to use that information in model aggregation software or might want to use it for a crane calculation how a lifting house is going to lift it on site. So we'll tick on the model property information and we'll see that come across. This saves this out as an ADSK file which can be opened natively in Revit. We're simply going to hit out OK in this and we're going to save this out to our desktop. So we'll hit save and we'll let the file actually publish out. It'll give me a nice report um, when this is actually completed. So I'm going to say yep show me the report so we can actually check it and actually give us uh, an indication of what, um, if any unsuccessful areas on the, on the export process. It all looks good and that's now available on the desktop. So I'm going to go into my Revit interface. I have a project I want to load this into, but let's have a look at that actual raw file. So this is an ADSK file, an exchange file from Autodesk. Um, and again, we've got various levels of details in here that we can actually add in. Um, we might need to unpin some of the objects like this binding box and just simply take that off. And again, let's take a look at it. But you can see that the diameter information actually has come across. You can also see the classification information has actually come across. Okay, this is Omniclass, we can't change it. Um, we should be using M um, MBS2, or Uniclass, sorry, 2 uh, for the UK, so we should. Okay, let's save this out as a family file. So we're gonna save this out as a family. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it Pentagon Heater Rubbery. I'm going to simply load this into a project so you can see it's ready to come in but let me just tile all the windows here so we can actually see our project running in the background. I've done some section views here
let's maximize that up. Okay, and let's insert under our systems. So we'll go to our mechanical equipment. That will bring in our new device. We can see that in our 3D view. And again, we can actually start connecting and working with the object. You can see the connections in here. If I simply right click, it'll allow me to draw a duct and I can start to add this information in. Again, it's working within the, um, the Revit parameters in here. So I can add in um, a transition or a T, etc. I can reduce the size of it as well. So it's going down to 150 and will add the appropriate transition in there. Same goes for supply and exhaust as well. We can just simply draw a duct. We can add that in. Add in a bend, and again, we can take that up as well. So we can see that in the 3D view, that information is actually getting captured, and it's actually getting drawn into our model. So very, very powerfully, we're taking information from um, Inventor that is actually coming into the Revit interface, and it's coming in classified and as an intelligent object, as we'd expect. I'm David Golly. Thanks for listening.